there any evidence that one's bodily position during sleep or the uh, orientation of the feet relative to the head, you know, the angle elevated or um, upward or downward has any impact on the uh, pattern of, of different sleep stages or uh, quality or uh, any other aspects of sleep. There is a reason for it. Let's remake this clip from the Huberman Lab podcast. Overall, this should be a pretty easy clip to make. And here's how we're going to do it. First, we need to locate and isolate this specific clip from the podcast episode. Then we need to adjust the framing to switch between who's talking during the clip. Then lastly, we're going to add some additional elements to this video to see if we can't spice it up and make an even better video than the original. So let's get to it. So before we get started on the actual editing of this clip, we need to first find that clip inside the episode. Now, I already have over 57 different moments pulled from this podcast episode, but we want to find the exact clip that we just saw. We're going to click new short down at the bottom. Then in the search, we're going to type the very first thing that he says in the video, and that was any evidence. And here we go. This is our clip. So we're going to highlight this entire clip that makes up our video, and we're going to click Create Short. Now we can get to actually editing it. Okay, so now we're looking at a full screen view of the clip itself, and you can see we have a lot of white around here, which means we're going to have to make adjustments to the framing of this video. We're going to take advantage of some of the AI features here to help carry most of that load for us. So coming over to the right here in Magic Edits, we're going to activate Magic Frame. Okay, so Magic Edit has done its thing, and I can see that the video actually fills the entire frame of our vertical format now. That was significantly quicker than if I were to go split the timeline up myself and try to manually readjust these things. Now, one thing I did notice as I was scrolling through the timeline here is that we do have several moments where it's kind of a prolonged silence, and we can actually cut all of these silences out, and we can do that manually by coming and clicking on it and hitting delete. Or, once again, we're going to turn to our AI tools on the side here, and we're going to activate this Magic Cut. And here we can see if we don't want it to cut silences, we want a more energetic. So it's going to cut more silences, a more balanced, or a more natural. And we're going to go for more energetic. We're going to cut down the duration of this video just a little bit, and we're going to make it a little quicker, a little bit snappier. Then for filler words, if we want to remove those, we can leave this checked on. I'm just going to check it off. I'm not too concerned about the filler words for this video. And then we're going to click apply. Okay, so there we go. Now our silences are removed from this video. There are several instances in here where silence has been cut from the video. And you you can see by looking at the total duration, we were at just over a minute. We were able to shave off four seconds from this video. That's four seconds of valuable attention from our viewers that we were able to save them just by removing some of the silences here in this clip. Okay, so now for our goal of recreating the clip, we're done. We located the clip we wanted from the episode, we clicked two buttons, and now we have a video that very closely resembles the original that we were looking at. So that maybe took us like, what, two minutes? Now since we saved all this time using AI to help us make the cuts versus manually doing it, I'll spend a little bit of time spicing this video up a little bit. Coming into the magic edits over here on the side, we can add additional elements to this video that'll make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more enticing for the viewer to stick around. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to magic emphasis. I'm gonna click activate. Let's turn on the emphasize camera frames with pops and zoom and we're going to emphasize the words that pop up on the screen as well and then click apply now since i did that if you look over into the transcript here you can see where all of the emphasized words by color and you can see some of them have changed in size this is all going to translate over into the actual video the viewers are watching then additionally if you look at the timeline you can see down in the clip some of these have a little lightning bolt on them these are all zoom in or pop it effects that were automatically added to these video clips. That I think in some instances it can be a little bit too much. So in this case we have Andrew Huberman talking and then we kind of zoom in on his face again while he's talking. I think this works when he's saying something of significant value that we want to focus in on. In this case I don't really feel that from where we jump from the two different clips here. So I'm actually going to click on the clip in the timeline here, come up to video effects, and I'm just going to turn this off. I don't want this effect here. Where I do want this effect is where we switch from the host to the guests. So with this clip selected, I'm going to come back up to video effects, and this is where I'm going to put the pop-in effect. Now, another thing that I noticed while working through this clip is that we are focused on a specific individual for an extended period of time. There's nothing really holding my attention other than what is being said. Once again, we're going to come over to our magic edits panel over on the side here, and we're going to activate magic media. We're going to do AI generated image and click activate magic media. Okay, so two images were added to this clip that were AI generated, but now we still have a stretch of video in here that is just a talking head. At this point, I'm going to add in another piece of b-roll i'm going to insert media and let's do another ai generated image so let's say person sleeping in their bed with their feet elevated 
All right, this will do. If we wanted, we could go tweak the prompt. We could generate more images. And I think this is perfectly fine for what we want. Now, the last thing I want to do to this video is when these B-roll clips are coming on screen, I don't want them to disappear. I want there to be a sound effect that goes along with it. So we can actually add this right to the actual B-roll clip itself. And to do that, we just click on the B-roll. And then we have the option over here for animation, which animation was already added for us. So super nice. And then we have sound. So if we click add sound in here, maybe we want a short swoosh sound. And I'm just going to bump this volume up a little bit, say to 60. And now we can see here that a sound effect was actually added underneath the B-roll. Now we can do the same thing with the other B-roll that we have in here. Let's take a look at the animation. Okay, so we have no animation. And in this case, I'm going to say I want this to actually pop in. Now we can choose if we want any animation shown during the image being shown. And I'm going to choose, since we're doing a pop in, I'm going to do a zoom in to go along with that. And then we come up over into sound effect to add our sound. And instead of doing a swoosh here, since the image is going to pop, I'm going to add a pop. And we're going to bump this up to 60 again. So let's take a look at our finished clip and see how we did. Is there any evidence that one's bodily position during sleep or the orientation of the feet relative to the head, you know, the angle elevated or um, upward or downward has any impact on the uh, pattern of, of different sleep stages or uh, quality or uh, any other aspects of sleep? There is a reason for it. And we'll probably come on to this at some point when we speak about different methods for sleep optimization or uh, the new wave of, of fascinating sleep enhancement tools it has to do with temperature, we think. That for you to be able to fall asleep and stay asleep, you have to drop your brain and body temperature by just a little less than about one degree Celsius or probably two, two and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And that's the reason, by the way, that you will always find it easier to fall asleep in a room that's too cold than too hot because the room that's too cold is at least taking you in the right temperature direction for good sleep. Okay, there it is. I think we did a pretty good job with this one, but I want to know what you think. Did our new clip do a better job than the original? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, if this was helpful, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we're going to be doing a lot more videos like this, breaking down what other creators are doing and showing how to implement that into your own content. So if that's of interest to you, hit that subscribe button.